Warning, copper acetate is highly toxic. Perform this experiment only if you have proper safety precautions, such as a fume hood or performing the experiment outside. Hi everyone. In the previous video, I showed you how to make copper acetate using copper sulfate as a precursor element. Today, I will show you how to make copper acetate from elemental copper, in our case, pennies. To do this experiment, we will need two glass containers, distilled white vinegar, and 3% hydrogen peroxide. In addition, I recommend getting a notepad and a laboratory grade scale, typically one that weighs up to 500 grams, and you can get them on eBay for about $5. However, we need to first talk about pennies and a brief history behind their production. Modern pennies are made of mostly zinc with only about 2.5% copper content, and this is just to coat the outside to give them that bronze color we all know and love. However, prior to 1983, they were made out of about 5% copper, and in our experiment, we intend to test this. Now, you have two beakers. One we will fill with the 1983 and before pennies, and the other beaker will contain modern pennies. First, both beakers were filled with about 27 grams of pennies. They were then filled with equal parts distilled vinegar and 3% hydrogen peroxide. What you should see is the evolution of oxygen gas as the reaction proceeds. These two solutions were then allowed to sit overnight. You will now be able to see a time-lapse reaction of this occurring over approximately 30 minutes before I ran out of space. This is the next morning, and as you can see, the pre-1983 pennies have actually gotten a lot more blue color than the post-1983 pennies. And I attribute this mostly to the fact that there's just more copper in the 1983 pennies than there are in the post-1983. Now, the green color could be copper chlorides, uh, or it's just some weird impurity that could have been in the vinegar or it could have been on the outside of the pennies because I really didn't clean them that well because I figured um, any insolubles would have been f uh, taken care of in the filtration. <clears throat> now here I have some disposable cups and disposable filters and I again cannot stress how important this is. Uh, copper acetate is highly toxic to small animals and children so be sure that you understand these risks. Now, I will speed up the filtration so you don't have to actually watch this, but the idea is you want to get rid of all these copper oxides and keep them on the filter paper. You can see after filtration that the pre-1983 pennies tend to have a green tinge to them, and this means that whatever is causing the green tinge is in both solutions, but it's just not present because the copper acetate is overpowering our senses of the green. In the background here, you can see the two solutions after filtration and the two pennies, and what the solutions did to the two pennies. Now, you can tell that there's a stark difference between the two. There's a deeper blue in the pennies that had more copper than there are in that which did not. So it's probably possible that most of the copper reacted to form copper oxide rather than copper acetate. There was a recorded loss of 
two three grams in the pre nineteen eighty three pennies and one point nine five grams in the post nineteen eighty four pennies. The best explanation I can come up with is that the copper was oxidized more so in the newer pennies. Copper oxide being insoluble in water is left behind in the filtration step. So far I've shown you two methods to make copper acetate, one involving copper sulfate and one involving copper metal. Of the two, I would say that copper sulfate is probably the cheaper of the two options and you can control it a little bit more. I also tried an electrolysis experiment, but it kind of failed. I ended up plating something in copper rather than actually removing it, and I don't have much experience when it comes to electroplating, so we'll leave that for a time when I understand it a little bit better. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out my other videos if you haven't already, and uh, I'll see you next time.